The Submariner and the Sea Dweller are both iconic watches from Rolex and epitomize what a dive watch should be. For more than 50 years, they have been industry leaders thanks to subtle refinements in design and advancements in technology. But before we focus on the current models, let's start with a brief history. The Submariner debuted in 1953, followed shortly by the Sea Dweller in 1967. Rolex created the Sea Dweller to meet the needs of elite saturation divers. These divers can spend weeks on end underwater and require a specific oxygen mixture that includes helium. When the divers resurfaced, the presence of helium in their watch would cause the watch to explode. Rolex solved this by adding a one-way helium escape valve to the middle of the case. This has become a distinguishing design element of the Sea Dweller. Another distinguishing element of the Sea Dweller is the lack of the date Cyclops. Because the watch could reach greater depths, the Cyclops could not be securely attached to the crystal. Fast forward to today, and the contemporary offerings of the Rolex Submariner 116610 and the Sea Dweller 126600. The 116610 Submariner hit the market in 2010 and was one of the largest departures from the original design. The watch maintained its 40 millimeter diameter and roughly 13 millimeter case thickness, but the case became bulkier. Thicker lugs and thicker crown guards resulted in what has been called the super case. And the changes didn't stop there. The watch got a maxi dial with proprietary luminescence called chromolite. Rolex also replaced the aluminum bezel with a much more durable ceramic and redesigned the rotating mechanism to be more secure and precise. The bracelet was completely redesigned, gaining solid links throughout and a milled clasp with the easy adjust glide lock feature. One of the only unchanged elements was the movement. Rolex continued supplying the Submariner with the caliber 3135. It was an instant classic, but not without flaws. One of the most notable gripes was the bulkier super case. Nevertheless, it is an easier watch to wear than the Sea Dweller because of its more modest size. In 2018, Rolex updated the Sea Dweller and it came with some big changes. For the first time, the size increased from 40 to 43 millimeters and the case thickness increased to 15 millimeters. Rolex also updated the movement to the new caliber 3235. It was a completely new Rolex caliber, which continues to replace the 3135 in other models. And the updates didn't stop there. The dial gained a matte finish and red text reminiscent of the original Sea Dweller. This is such a great addition. The matte dial isn't as matte as a true vintage Rolex, but side by side with the Submariner, you can clearly see it's a much lighter dial with a nice texture to it. And the red text feels like Rolex is actually listening to what people want. A great way to give a nod to the original. You can see how much larger the Sea Dweller is than the Submariner. Not only is the case larger and thicker, but the bracelet is also 22 millimeters, creating a greater wrist presence. The increased size does help with the proportions of the Sea Dweller. Regardless of where you stand on the Cyclops, it is less obtrusive on the Sea Dweller because of the watch's larger size. The lugs also taper to a physically thinner size than the Submariner. They're also proportionally thinner. Just look at the difference. Even though the Sea Dweller just received an update, the Submariner is no slouch. The one word we would use to describe the Submariner is impressive. When the 116610 Sub debuted, it was such an advancement for the Sub that it truly felt like a modern tool watch. And now, the Sea Dweller feels like it's paving the way for the next chapter of the Submariner. With the Sea Dweller's growth in size and the addition of the Cyclops, it feels even more like the big brother to the Submariner and hopefully it gives us a glimpse into what may be in store for the future. At the end of the day, these two watches feel as unique as they are similar. If it comes down to style, the Sea Dweller wins. But for an everyday wear, the Submariner is probably a better option for most people. We would love to know what you think about the new Sea Dweller versus the Submariner, and let us know which you prefer and why. And thanks for watching.